So as we all know, the quadratic equation x squared plus 1 is equal to 0 has two non-real solutions, namely i and negative i. But now, what if we have this? a squared plus this capital I is equal to 0, where a is a 2 by 2 matrix and the capital I is the 2 by 2 identity matrix, which is 1, 0, 0, 1. And the 0 really means the zeros matrix, which in this case will be 0, 0, 0, 0. Are we going to end up with non-real matrix? We could, but we don't have to. In fact, there are infinitely many solutions, including both the real and also non-real matrix. So how do we solve this? Let me tell you though, it's possible to take the square root of a matrix if it exists, but the method of doing so is not so easy. So in this video, I'm going to do it the more general way, which is also not so easy either. The way is, I'm going to start off by saying that A equal to a general form of the matrix, which is A, B, C, D. And this right here could be real or non-real, up to you. All right, I'm going to first figure out what A squared is. So A squared is just going to be A, B, C, D times itself. And to multiply two matrix, we'll just have to do the dot product of a row and a column. So we do A times A, which is A squared. And then we add it with B times C. Continue. This dot that. So AB plus BD. Continue. AC plus CD. And then lastly, B, C, and then this times that, so D squared. Cool. So this is what A squared is. Now, I will have to add it with I, which is just 1, 0, 0, 1, and then make it equal to 0. So the only way for that to happen is when we add this plus 1 is equal to 0, the entry have to match, right? So we are going to get the condition that 1, a squared plus bc plus 1 has to be 0. And then continue, this plus 0 is equal to 0. So I'll just write ab plus bd is equal to 0. And then number 3, this plus 0 is equal to 0. So ac plus cd is equal to 0. And finally, bc plus d squared plus 1 has to be 0. So these are the four conditions that we need. <laughs> it's not so easy, right? Okay, so how are we going to do it? Firstly though, I'm just going to start off by looking at equation 1 and equation 4. Notice they both have bc and also the 1. So I'm going to just do equation 1, subtract equation 4. Right here, we will end up with just a squared minus d squared and that will give us zero and then if you factor it we'll just take the square root and whatnot you will end up with either a is equal to d or a is equal to negative d so we have these two cases and we do have to consider both so as you can see it's not so easy either but let me just erase the board right here so first i'm going to consider the case that a is equal to d And let's see what happens. Take a look at the equation 2. We can factor out the b. So b times a plus d is equal to 0. And that will imply that either b is equal to 0 or a is equal to negative d. Now, we already have a is equal to d. So can we have a is equal to negative d? Yes, under the condition that they are both equal to 0. So the truth is, in this case here, there's a subcase that we have to consider. It's either A and D are both equal to zero, or both of them are non-zero. Let's do this one right here first. Suppose they are non-zero, then this is not going to happen. That means we must have B is equal to zero. And later on, we will have to consider what if A and D are both equal to zero. 
And then we go to equation 3. We factor out the C. And then we can also conclude that C is equal to 0 or A is equal to negative D. And again, in that case there, this is not going to happen. So that means C has to be equal to 0. All right, now, what A and D though? They cannot be equal to 0. And can they be like anything? No, be careful. We will have to plug in this condition into equation 1. Have a look. Equation 1 will give us a squared plus 1 is equal to 0, which implies that a is equal to plus or minus i. And then if you do the same thing to equation 4, d squared plus 1 is equal to 0, or you can just use this condition here. In fact, a and d will be the same. So what we can conclude is that a I'll just write d is equal to a is equal to i or d is equal to a is equal to negative i and then with the b and c being equal to zero. And this is the case that you actually end up with a very similar situation. You just take the square root of negative one. You have the entry being the i and i, negative i, i and all that stuff. You have four possibilities from here, which is pretty cool. Now. As we mentioned earlier, we will have to consider the case that if a is equal to d and they are both equal to 0. And here, when we have a and d are both equal to 0, it seems like b times 0 is equal to 0, which is true for any value for b, right? Likewise, c should also be able to be anything. But that's not true, because there's a connection between b and c. Have a look. a is equal to 0. Put it here. Equation 1 will give you the condition that b times c plus 1 is equal to 0. So subtract 1 to both sides and divide c to both sides. Then we get the condition that, let's just say b is equal to negative 1 over c. Of course, you can also isolate the c instead. And right here, because we're dividing by c, so of course you have to indicate that c cannot be equal to 0. And when d is equal to 0, if you put it right here, bc plus 1 is equal to 0, which is the same thing here. So in fact, we have a couple more solutions from here. And I'm going to just write them down later on for you guys. So keep this in mind. Lastly, we will have to consider the case that when a is equal to negative d, and they are not equal to 0. Because if they are equal to 0, then it's right here already. So case when a is equal to negative d, and then let me just emphasize that they are not zero. So, if a is equal to negative d, and we are not talking about zero, then that means this right here is zero, this right here is zero, so b and c, again, it seems like it can be anything that we want, right? Here, we have to be careful. A is not equal to 0, so I cannot plug in 0 into here and then just do what we did earlier. No, we cannot do that. We will have to look at this equation and then just solve for A. A is going to be depending on B and C. Likewise, D is going to be depending on B and C as well. So, when A is equal to negative D, have a look. Equation 1. This time, it's going to give us a squared plus bc plus 1 is equal to 0. This right here stays here. And then I'm just going to move both terms to the other side and then take the square roots to both sides. So it implies that a is equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1 minus bc. And b and c, you can choose anything that you want in this case because if this is true, then these two equations are always true for any b and c, and then plus this time, you really can choose anything you want for b and c. Now, if you know this is a, we still have this condition. So the idea is that if a is equal to square root of negative i, negative one plus b c, then d would be the negative version of it. If a is the negative version of it, then D will be the positive version of it. 
and right here B and C are free. Finally, I just want to write down all the possible answers for you guys, at least uh, how they look like. So have a look. So here are the solutions. From here, we have A and D both equal to I, and B and C both equal to zero. So we have I, zero, zero, I. Or we can also have A and D both equal to negative I, and then still C and B are equal to zero. Done. And this is very similar to what we did for x squared plus 1 is equal to 0, where we have i and negative i. However, when we have a matrix, we have more possibilities. From here, the way I wrote it is that c is a free variable as long as it's not equal to 0. So I shall say c is free. You can pick anything that you want except for 0. And b will be depending on c. And a and d are equal to 0. So 0. 0, c is free, but not 0, and then b is negative 1 over c, and then we are done. And that's it from this case. Then, right here, notice that um, if you want to deal with like, now real results, then you can let b and c be anything that you want. There's nothing that you have to worry about. So I will say b and c are free from this case. When a is the positive square root, then d will be the negative square root version. So I'm going to first have positive square root negative 1 minus bc. And again, b and c are free in this case. And then I will just have b here and c here. And d will just be the negative version of the square root negative 1 minus bc. And then the other case is when a is the negative square root, negative 1 minus b, c, and then b and c are free, so b, c, and d is the square root of negative 1 minus b, c. And that's it. Notice one thing though, right here, for example, if b and c are both equal to 0, you will end up with i, 0, 0, and negative i, which is different than these. Likewise, if b and c are both equal to 0, we end up with negative i, 0, 0, and i. So, this right here is what I came up with for the solution to a squared plus i is equal to 0, where a is a 2 by 2 matrix and i is the 2 by 2 identity matrix. We have infinitely many solutions, which I think is very, very cool. 